Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just put together a quick video investigating and fixing an ABS fault on this 2015 Vauxhall Vivaro. And the main issue we've got, we've got the ABS light on, the traction light on, the spanner lights on there. We've just got this message on the dash as well. I'll just strike it up and just show you. The engine light will clear, but we're left with all the, with these three warnings and the message at the top there as well that was permanently on. Now we've just got the diagnostic machine plugged onto it. We're using the top down Phoenix Light 2. And we've got two faults in the ABS ECU, and these are permanent faults. As soon as we clear these, put the ignition back on, the fault to both faults come straight back into it. So um, it's DF codes, which is quite normal with Renault's. It comes up with this style of code, but we can see they've got the description on there right rear wheel speed sensor, open circuit, and computer power supply. And we're just going to go into the actual ABS ECU and just check on the wheel speeds. It's just there's something that i've noticed with this diagnostic machine i don't know why it's if it's only doing it on this one specifically um, but it's actually coming up with a different wheel when you check on the data but at least with this function you can just check to make sure we are going to the right wheel so you can just see i've highlighted the wheel speeds already but straight away as soon as we go onto there you can see obviously three of them on zero but for some reason it's saying the left hand rear wheel is obviously well out compared to the others there um, but the fault code is relating to the right hand wheel rear wheel so we can just take the machine out just spin the wheels up now just double check just make sure we're going to the right wheel first just put this on the offside rear wheel just give it a quick spin and see we'll get a nothing alter at all on that if we go to the left hand rear wheel and spin that up it is actually reading so but it does say rear right hand wheel so it just it's a nice little check I although it is wrong we can just use it to confirm that we're definitely looking at the right wheel the right hand rear wheel so what we're going to do now is just get the wheel off get it up in the air just have a quick look at the actual abs wiring loom i'm fairly certain this is going to be just a fault relating to the actual abs sensor going to have a bit of a look at the wiring um, but the abs sensors for these are really cheap it's a lot cheaper to try this first rather than because the wiring's quite well rooted underneath rather than sort of pulling all that apart to see if we can find a fault obviously you can check continuity from this end of the sensor all the way up to the abs ccu but again you do have to disturb a few bits to do it so i'm fairly certain we're going to have an issue with the abs sensor on this but we'll just get it get it up in the air and just check the wire and everything first Right, so just got the wheel off now i've got a new abs sensor now uh, if you're interested in the sensor or you need one if you just check the links in the description below or I'll put one above i put a link to where you can get one from i put a link to all the different tools that i use in my videos as well now I've got one on standby just in case i'm pretty sure this is going to be the fault the one thing that we can do before actually taking all the sensor off and everything is basically just plug it in and we should be able to see on the diagnostic machine we've got the ignition on if it takes this down to zero which will just show it just help us prove whether it's actually a fault with the wiring pre the sensor or not so i'll just run you through where the wiring where it all plugs in and everything where the connector is then we'll just swap that just plug it in quickly just show that it um just see what it does on the diagnostic machine and go from there Right, so just coming up from underneath, just to the back of the brake disc, you can just see the ABS sensor just comes through and in, into here. Basically got a torx headed bolt, just holding it in. And it actually reads on the back of the brake disc, it'll have a magnetic ring, and that's what it actually picks its signal up from. Um, but the wiring just roots down along the arm, up round here, and then we've got a connector here, so it's really easy to access. The wiring from this stage on goes down the side of the chassis there. Um, but all I'm going to do now is just remove this connector. It's just simply a little pinch plug there just to pull that side of it away from it. I'm just going to connect the new sensor into it, check on the diagnostic machine, see if it puts the signal down to zero. Obviously, at the minute, the sensor's not in, so you won't be able to read any wheel speed or anything like that. But if it puts it down to zero, it's pointing us in the right direction that it's the sensor at, the, at fault. So we'll then go on to fit the sensor after that. We'll just swap the sensor over quick now, the connector, and just check it. Right, so we've got that new sensor in now. We've actually cleared the fault codes, come back into it, and the, the wheel speed is still reading the same. It's reading well out, so it does look like we're actually gonna be looking at a wiring fault on this one. So we're just gonna keep digging a bit further now, see what we can come up with. 
Right, so I just had a quick look around. I found the fault already, it didn't take too long. Now, before I get in too involved, like I said before, about stripping some of the wiring out to do the continuity checks and everything, if I've got a suspicion of a wiring fault, I always have a good look at the loom and check some of the sort of suspect areas before getting too stuck into it. I've nearly found the, found the fault straight away. Um, just basically, just looking at the loom where it first goes back, I see there's some sort of clip pieces where it clips in the back of the heat shield. And just the very first one, which is just on the other side, you just sort of see the bottom of the clip there, just clips in on that at the top. I've just pulled that back there, you can already see we've got a load of corrosion and actually a break. It's a little bit tricky to see on the camera, but it's actually rotted all the way through on one of them wires. So all we're going to do now is just strip this bit of conduit off it, just tidy all the loom up. I'm just going to repair that with some solder connectors and then we'll plug the we can use the old connector, the old sensor now, fairly happy that'll be okay. Put the sensor back on it and just make sure that, that signal on the diagnostic machine drop down to, drops down to zero. So we'll just do that now and check it after. Now I've got that stripped back, I'm just trying to focus in and show you. You'll see it's completely rotted through on that uh, sort of ready color wire there, ready purple wire. So, but yeah, now that we've got that, we'll just untwine these, see if we've got some, hopefully we've got some solder connectors, repair them, and just get it back together. Right, so we've just got, just to uh, repair the wires, we've got a couple of these heat shrink solder connectors. I really like using these, make a really nice, neat job of it. Obviously it melts the solder to get a joint there, and it has these two little bands that just seal it up on the wire as well. Uh, if you're interested in these, I'll put a link to them in the description below. And we've got some of this heat shrink loom, which is like the glue lined loom as well. Yeah, the glue lined heat shrink as well, which is a lot better. So basically we'll sleeve that over first, and once we've done, we can just push that over the top, heat that up, and that'll just shrink down and just seal it up as well so it gets a really good um repair on the wire that's all so just going to run through it now just show you quickly when it's done and then we'll uh, go back to the scanner and hopefully it's fixed the fault Right, so we've now got that on. Just put that heat shrink over the top there. It's really nice and sealed and watertight. I've just plugged the old connector, the old sensor in now. Obviously, we, ain't, we don't need to use a new sensor. So we're just going to get the diagnostic machine on it now and just see if it's set that speed back down to zero. Uh, so you can just see, we've just turned the ignition back on and it's reading zero now. So it's looking like that's fixed the fault. All I'm going to do now is just connect all the loom back up, just have a quick tidy up. Obviously, I'm happy that there's uh, there's no reason to replace the ABS sensor, just simply a wiring fault. So just rebuild that back quick, back up quickly, put the wheel on, just give it a quick road test. And we'll just spin the wheel up as well. I'll just show you once, um, before I get it fully back together, we'll just spin the wheel up and just show that it's reading on the diagnostic machine as well. Uh, so now we've got the wheel on, it's obviously still jacked up just off the ground, we're just going to spin it up and you can just see we're getting a nice speed reading on that wheel now as well. So all I'm going to do now is just finish off, just torque the wheel up properly, just give it a quick spin and just show you that it's took all the warning lights off the dash as well. Again, if you're interested in any of the tools that I've used tonight, um, just check the description below and I'll list them all in there as well. Right, so just been and took it for a run, um, but as soon as we struck it up, the ABS light was out straight away. We cleared the fault codes anyway before we did anything else, but we've, before, as soon as I put the ignition back on, the fault comes straight back in. After doing, we've only been for two or three miles, but that was enough to know that it was reading okay. You can see it's all green on the ABS uh, ECU now, we've got no faults in there. If we just strike it up as well. 
you just see we're all good now no warning lights on there so it's fixed the fault yeah just thought i'd share the video and um, before i started it i was i've done quite a few abs sensors on these i was thinking it was just going to be the abs sensor to be honest um, i got i always get a sensor on standby in case anyway as i said before it's really easy to just plug it in just to see whether it's going to fix the fault before you go any further so um, but as it turned out it uh, obviously turned out to be a wiring issue which is always nice it's probably quite a common area where they are going to be failing so if you've got a fault with um, your abs and it's on that side it might be worth just checking that as well so but yeah hope you like the video if you did give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and we'll see you next time